Hey, what's up, you guys? It's Sunny. Welcome back to episode 24 of Sunny's Geeky Grove. Today, I will be talking about Doctor Who and my first real introduction to Doctor Who, where I started, which Doctor I started with, obviously, and how I got into it. And basically, I'm going to start at the beginning. Um, before we dive into that, if you're not subscribed, why don't you click that button? And ring the bell if you want to get notified whenever I upload. So, um, I am not going to give you, like, the history of Doctor Who or anything like that. If you've never seen it, it was around in the 60s. It is a British broadcasting company uh, television show. It was supposed to be, like, getting children into science and things like that. Um, when the first actor who played the doctor wanted to leave the show, it still had really high ratings. So they said, Hey, since he's a time lord, an alien species from the planet Gallifrey, he can just regenerate and he can become someone else. So he does. <laughs> Essentially, when the body gets so bad, either so old or damaged in other means, and it would essentially die instead of ceasing to live, it regenerates and becomes a new body with a new personality face, um, but it has all the memories. So I actually had heard of Doctor Who a lot um, growing up and, you know, seeing the old stuff and seeing all the nerds walking around wearing the shirts and seeing them at comic cons and stuff like that. But I had never really watched it up until about five years ago, maybe mm, a little before that. But I am one who cannot start a story in the middle. It's like if you were to read a book and start a chapter eight, I can't do that. So I knew that there was, you know, like 15 seasons before and tons of episodes, but they did a reboot starting in 2005 starring Christopher Eccleston and Billy Piper. And I said, you know what? I'm going to start there. Everybody else was like, oh, just start with 11. Start with the 11th Doctor. I'm like, that's season five, brah. Like, why would I, why would I do that to myself and miss out on all of the other, like, background information and, you know, getting used to the world? What if I don't even like it? So I did start with the ninth Doctor, played by Christopher Eccleston. He is our war-torn doctor. He's angry and hurt. He is just lost basically his entire family, species, mass genocide of the Time Lords from the Time Worm. And like I said, I'm not going to go into lots of specifics on the story or anything like that, but, um, you know, that little background information is important. He's very, he's very devastated by what he had to do. He was the one that killed all of the other Time Lords and all of the Daleks. And he's the last of his kind. And he travels through time and space all alone in a TARDIS, a phone box <laughs> that um, he stole. And it's chameleon circuit broke. <laughs> Which is such a great way to explain the fact that it is just going to always be a phone box. And it's one of those shows that it came out in 2005. The reboot did, or the revival, or whatever you want to call it. So it came out in 05. And at that time, CGI, mm, not that great. But they were very ambitious. They did a lot of practical effects as well, which were always fun, always great to see on screen. But sometimes they had to do, you know, CGI, computer effects. And there's <laughs> the premiere episode titled Rose, where we meet, you know, we meet the doctor and we meet 
um, Billy Piper's character, Rose, and her boyfriend, Mickey, and her mom, Jackie. And, you know, we just <laughs> see the horrible <laughs> CGI graphics with the plastic because that's the big bad in the episode. It's this alien life form that can manipulate plastic and turns people into plastic. I don't know. It's, it's campy and cheesy and so much fun. And it's just, the CGI is not that great throughout probably the first few seasons. I'd say it gets a lot better towards season four and five. Um, they rely, I feel like they relied less heavily on it. They did more practical effects, more just set design and things like that. But obviously you do still have to have some CGI throughout the entire series. But, so I did, I started with, with nine. And, you know, I saw the first episode and I was like, are you kidding me? (laughs) These (laughs) graphics and, are you serious? Like, isn't this like a big budget show? Like, didn't they have a big budget? And I still loved it because it, it the acting in it was really great. Even if it was a little over the top sometimes, I don't know. It was just really great. Plus, they introduced Rose. Obviously, he needs a companion. So Rose is a shop girl. You know, she graduated high school and she went right into the blue collar workforce. She works at a shop. She comes home. She hangs out with her boyfriend at the pub. She, you know, goes home, sleeps and starts her day over again. And she lives with her mom and all that. She doesn't have super extraordinary superhuman powers or... Uh, you know, a PhD in science or physics or she's, uh, as best as I can put it, she is your average girl. She is amazing and wonderful, but there's nothing that really sets her apart from somebody else walking down the street. And that introduction of that type of character was really intriguing to me. Because the way that she and the doctor play off of each other is really interesting. He he basically degrades her and says, you're a stupid human. What can you do? And she saves him. She ends up saving him from these creatures and saving London. And just it, your average shop girl who just graduated college or not college, high school, And she's saving the world. And, you know, the doctor kind of looks at her a little bit differently after that. And it's just one of those shows that has the really great chemistry between these two actors that makes everything believable. Even in these most far-fetched and overacted and insanely cheesy CGI situations you have these two characters these two actors that is just so believable you believe that they maybe kind of hate each other don't really trust each other but there's something underneath the surface that it's just they're instantly bonded (sighs) just I don't know from the second you know the doctor grabbed her hand and said run I was like oh my gosh I ship it do I ship this already? This is literally like the first scene, but I ship it. And I, I really do ship nine and Rose. I also ship 10 and Rose. That's not it. That's okay. They're both the doctor. And I love Rose. And it's one of those shows that will always have something new going on and something that will reach other people. There's very, 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 very silly episodes. And then there are some serious ones. There's serious plots or serious moments. There's pain and emotional turmoil. And you get a wide range within this science fiction TV show. 
And it's not necessarily just one thing, which they handle very well. Um, Russell T. Davies was the showrunner for seasons one through four. And, you know, he brought us nine and ten doctors and some of, in my opinion, the best companions in <laughs> two weeks. I will actually, my podcast episode 26, I will be ranking my companions that I have seen and, um, I will explain why, and I look forward to that. But for this one, um, Nine was my first doctor. He was my doctor that brought me into the show, that really showed me that the doctor was so well-rounded. He was angry. He was empathetic. He was, you know, he could have fun and joke and be happy, and he was bitter and harsh but he also was so immensely caring and it just Christopher Eccleston really did such a fantastic job portraying the doctor and it's just when he left and the way that he left was very sad it wasn't the saddest regeneration by no means. Um, but it was, it was sad. It was heartbreaking to see Christopher Eccleston go because he was my doctor. Um, and then, you know, David Tennant saunters in and I'm like, oh, okay, never mind. I changed my mind. But that's not the point. <laughs> but Christopher Eccleston, he was my first doctor. He is the one that got me into the show. He is the one that kept me there because of how well he portrayed the doctor on screen, how well he interacted with all of the humans, the seemingly insignificant people and characters in the show, and how he, you know, would brush some off and say that they're, you know, tiny ants, and then he would hold others up in high esteem. It was very wonderful. Um, it just, without a doubt, I feel like nine should have had more seasons, but I understand that there's a lot of stuff on the back end as far as, you know, the <laughs> personality is butting heads. Um, there are rumors supposedly confirmed that Christopher Eccleston and Russell T. Davies, RTD, had some issues together on set and he asked to be written off the show. And, you know, David Tennant was then approached to become the doctor and all of that good stuff with the regeneration. And, you know, David Tennant lasted three seasons. He lasted seasons two, three, and four. So, I mean, he must have been having fun and the ratings must have been good. And then at the end of four, we got a new showrunner and then it all went downhill. And so, um, yeah, also season one, if you will, I just go by season one, uh, for the reboot I had some of the best episodes. Um, the doctor dances. It's a two part episode. It's with, the children and the humans that end up becoming these gas mask figures that just keep asking, are you my mommy? And they are so creepy. And that's also where we get introduced to Captain Jack Harkness for the first time. And it just, there's two of the best episodes of that season. Obviously, the last one's probably my favorite, but as far as, like, the monster of the week goes and the character developments that we get and, obviously, Captain Jack, um, it just, it's so good. And that episode, both episodes are actually written by Stephen Moffat, who has created some of the best monsters on the show or written some of the best episodes he wrote the doctor dances part one and two he created the silence from season six i believe he created um 
the weeping angels, which then got drove into the ground and fucking turned into a joke. But Moffat did do some good. And especially in season one, those episodes are my favorite. And we won't talk about him as a showrunner because I don't really like negativity all that much. But I do appreciate what he did for season one because his episodes were some of my favorite, especially those two. Um, my favorite quote is, um, just this once, Rose, everybody lives. It's just, it's so well done and such a well-delivered line. And Christopher is just so beautiful as the doctor. It really, it really broke my heart when they announced the 50th anniversary and he declined to be in the episode, the mini movie, if you will. And then watching it and then hearing his rationale, I understood completely because they do essentially rewrite canon and just completely change his character's motivation. And, you know, we won't get into that either, but I really wished I could have seen Christopher Eccleston as the doctor one last time because, <sighs> I mean, he was my doctor. Oh, I'm just going to keep gushing about Christopher Eccleston and the Doctor and Rose and Mickey and Jackie. And anyway, next week, next week's episode, I'm going to be talking about seasons two through four and what I enjoyed about those and probably my top three favorite episodes. Um, I'll do probably one from each season and, um, all of that good stuff. So if you're interested in Doctor Who and hearing me gush about it, then stop by next week. <laughs> I do post new podcast episodes every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And, you know, if you liked this video, give me a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe, do that and ring the bell. Get notified. Um, but that is where I'm going to leave you today. I could talk forever on Doctor Who, but we're trying to be focused on just season one of the reboot. So with that, my name is Sunny. You have been amazing, and I truly hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.